Uh, I will talk about why I think that plaque detection is important. I'll go a little bit into the history. Uh, I will talk about plaque quantification, how it sort of developed in a clinically feasible way to evaluate plaque. How, what is the predictive value of the plaque? How we can use it for uh, treatment monitoring and where it stand at the moment in the guidelines and where is our future? So a couple of years ago, you know, this was November 2021, uh, these were the new chest pain guidelines from the ACCHA and multimodality societies. And really the big change was that first time in the guidelines, the CTA, coronary CTA got a class 1A indication for the evaluation patient with stable and, uh, and acute coronary artery disease. But for me, that was not the biggest news. The biggest news are in the text where previously we've seen, uh, because of the modalities that we use, CAD mostly is obstructive disease or prior evidence of events. Uh, whereas the new guideline really emphasize uh, the coronary atherosclerosis as, uh, as basically diagnosis of no coronary disease. And it was indeed the intent of the guidelines writer to ensure that those with lesser degree of stenosis who do not require actually coronary intervention still uh, will get appropriate medical treatments to prevent future cardiovascular events. Of course, when you talk about plaque, you need to understand what we see and potentially what we don't see. And these are the data from Stella Papadopoulou back in sort of 2011, correlating CT data with the intravascular ultrasound. And as you can see, we really reliably see plaques that are 1, 1 1.25, 1 1.5 millimeters in thickness. Once you get to smaller plaques, less than one millimeter, sensitivity sort of goes down, and we don't really see in CT plaques that are less than 500 microns. And this is important too, because you, you can sometimes compare to intravascular techniques, to microvascular function, and there can be type of diseases that coronary CTA will not detect, and you have to understand that limitation. Uh, and we learned, again, in the first decade of the, uh, of the plaque imaging that our sensitivity and specificity is compared to intravascular ultrasound or other intravascular techniques such as OCT, virtual histology, IVUS, is fairly good, you know, in the sort of 80s to 90s uh, uh, in terms of sensitivity and specificity. Using this type of softwares, uh, the people were able to do uh, correlations with intravascular imaging and confirm that indeed what we more measure, whether it's non-calcified plaque volume, uh, percentage of non-calcified plaque or uh, plaque burden, the same for calcified plaque volume, actually correlate fairly well. I mean, the correlation is not perfect, but what we learned is what you measure in the non-invasive coronary CTA does correlate with intravascular images. So over the next decade, with the sort of development of new techniques, now we are at a stage where, because of the advances in machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence, uh, there are commercial companies that can do this quantitative assessment for us. And there are multiple, and of course, there's a rapidly evolving field in terms of the reimbursement and how it's, how it's sort of marketed, how it's available. But fundamentally, all these, company, uh, all these companies now provide tools that you can clinically uh, and commercially, hopefully in the near future, get your plaque assessment, which makes it available for everybody around the world for clinical practice, which is important. It gets text use from the lab, where the sort of your postdoc does it for half an hour, an hour, to the point where you can do it with these deep learning analysis from average time of 25 minutes to around five or six seconds. How do the qualitative assessment of plaque, uh, how does the qualitative assessment of plaque uh, inform us of the medical therapies and how do we treat patients, what happens with the patients over time? There are a couple sort of things that I want to highlight in this section of the talk. The first one is that when we present the results of cardiac CT, and this includes calcium score or uh, coronary CTA, to patients, they tend to change what they do in their life. These are the, this is meta-analysis that Leslie Shaw prepared for our, actually the consensus statement document from the SCCT that we will talk a little bit later about. Shows from multiple studies that when you have patients who have non-obstructive or obstructive disease, they tend to increase their use of both statin and aspirin over time. 
These data are confirmed in other studies. There's a study from Danish cohort, of course, in Denmark, when they had national healthcare system, they really follow up the patients very closely. They know actually when the patients pick up their medications. They have population that really trusts the medical system, so they actually take the medications when you tell them to take the medication. And these are the results. So you have patients that had coronary CTA at the baseline. And then you can see that really there is uptake of the statin use, especially in those who have larger amount of coronary atherosclerosis, obstructive or more extensive coronary disease, measured here with coronary calcium in terms of, uh, of uh, extension of the disease. So again, the patients that had baseline and follow-up uh, CTAs, and what this slide shows is what happens with the plaque characteristics over time when you are on statin, successful statin treatment. You have the left two panels which show you what happens with non-calcified, low CT attenuation and fibrofatty, 30 to 130 hounds filling with plaques. So that over the course of the time, those who are statin, they decrease the amount of that type of plaque. So the plaque that is non-calcified decreases which is paralleled at the two bottom parts with the increase in calcified plaque. So at this point, what we do mostly with the treatment of atherosclerosis, we change the characteristics of the plaque. And quantitative CT analysis allows us to understand what happens with the patients, how the plaque characteristics change, that that's what we do to the plaque. You have patients that are not treated and progress. This is a patient that was not treated, decided not to be on treatment, and over time develop plaque and higher amount of long density non-calcified plaques. But our ultimate goal, hopefully in the next decade or so, and again, preventive cardiology and people who work really hard on this area of research with new treatments is to get to potentially plaque regression. And I think the coronary CTA will be critical to monitor the success of it. If we are able to actually show that over time, you really regress the total amount of plaque, especially the amount of plaques that have a low attenuation, uh, a low attenuation plaque.